in the free content that came with Bryce 7.1 Pro you should have got a couple of scenes that look like this and uh, what I want to do in this tutorial is take the clouds from this scene and transfer them into this scene and render it with uh, Trambience mode. Now you might already be aware that volumetric clouds and Trambience mode don't mix very well and I'll demonstrate this now so I'll open the uh, the scene free content cloud over Big Sur 1 and what I'm going to do to demonstrate is transfer this volumetric cloud so that's the overhead view zoom in select the cloud slab edit copy and then open the other file this one and switch to the overhead view select this slab that's already in that one delete it edit paste that puts that slab in there and go to the render options I'm going to change to premium effects 64 rays per pixel true ambience I'll set this up as the render is going to be when I've uh, demonstrated an alternative method it's going to incorporate the spherical mapper so I'll just set this going so you can see how long it's going to take right you'll notice it's not jumping uh, to, towards doing anything yet even though I've hit render right you can see it's going to be quite slow okay the spherical mapper can be found on the Bryce Tutorials website under Bryce Downloads under my name, it's something made by Horror myself and uh, on the DAS 3D website the product looks like this so to, to follow this tutorial um, well you can you can watch the tutorial, you don't need the spherical mapper but if you want to recreate what I do in the tutorial then uh, you have to find some way of spherical mapping your clouds um, which obviously the spherical map is designed for. Anyway, I, I won't labour that point. I'll just pause the video here and we'll see how long it, it predicts it's going to take. Six hours, 40 minutes then. That's my challenge is then to produce a better effect using the spherical mapper in less time than six hours, 40 minutes. So I better pull my finger out. Right, we'll go back to this scene and set things up with the spherical mapper. I'm going to get rid of the terrain. I've just switched the overhead view here and I'm going to bring the spherical mapper in from the object library where I saved it and position that at the origin of the scene. And then I'm going to select the camera here and modify its attributes so that is also set at the origin of the scene with no rotations. Uh, for the spherical mapper I need to set the document setup to a 2 to 1 aspect ratio All right, and now I need to consider what resolution I need for the backdrop because right, you've got to consider that I'm going to capture the entire sky but not all of it will be visible from the camera angle so I could choose different resolutions at this so I'm going to select this part way maximums there 4000 pixels width in this uh, and this particular setup is the maximum width you can have, so I'll set it like that. The other thing I've got to consider is the slab. Because uh, there's some banding appeared in the slab, I could try taking the quality up, but that will increase the render time. But bear in mind, I'm trying to beat 6 hours 40. So, it's, it's uh, the thing is, once I've captured the the spherical backdrop then th there'll be no further overheads and I can reuse it in other scenes as well so it's tempting to save it at the highest resolution as well. Render options I need to set for 360 degree panoramic projection switch to the camera view and now if I render it we'll see how long that's going to take um, 6 minutes 39 okay right I'll, uh, I'll pause the video here and then we'll see what it looks like when it's completed there then is the uh, image of the clouds for my spherical map. I'll file, save as, and call this fc underscore sm1. And I need to modify this to provide the mask for these clouds. And the sky options first of all. I'll set the atmosphere to off and then make sure that this is fully black. And go into the sky lab and disable the sun. Go into the IBL tab, disable the backdrop. Uh, if I render in scene now we can see what the result is you can see here that uh, the clouds still have some ambient colour so if I select the 
cloud slab and switch ambient just to fully white so that's fully white now check out at that and then render that it should render a little bit faster because there's no direct lighting now so I'll just uh, pause the video here while this completes another three minutes here then is the completed mask which I will now save as and because I'd saved a, with a 1 before Bryce has kindly incremented it to a 2 there so I don't overwrite my previous file. Now switch to the file where I'm going to graft these clouds in switch to the overhead view there is a fill light here and I'm not going to need that because I'm going to use Trambient rendering and the cloud slab if I get hold of the cloud slab I don't need that either so there's my scene and now I'm going to create a sphere to take the spherical map. So that's, uh, that's occurred somewhere out of the field of view, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to modify the material. I don't need diffusion. I'm going to use ambience. Put a blob in ambience. Switch to picture. Go to the texture source editor. Click on an empty square. Load in my... no, no, that's not that image. This image, the spherical map and then load in the mask to go with it so there we go, load in our mask check out of that, it's automatically set it to sinusoidal which is not very useful, we want spherical, so set it to spherical it's going to be transparent I want it to cast shadows but I don't need it to receive shadows or self shadows so when the, the sun shining through this will allow uh, shadows of the clouds to be cast which is useful so I'll check out of this now and then go to edit and enlarge this sphere I'll use the overhead view to get some kind of guide so that it wraps around the terrain and doesn't clip it so I'll just zoom out make sure we're not clipping the terrain there switch back to the main view and go to sky and the ambient color here is uh, going to drive the appearance of this so I need this to be set to be white so that'll lighten the clouds if you can see in the preview here I also want all these settings to be black because uh, the colour of the sky is being provided by my backdrop so that's set those down let's have a quick render now you can see it is a quick render right I want to rotate this sphere around to get to the cloud patterns I want so I'll just rotate the sphere and I'm watching the preview here to see when it's when it's where I want the clouds to be so it should be looking familiar now in this situation the clouds are covering the sun up so I need to move the sun around to the right but I'm not uh, I'll just save this position of the camera right I'm not forced to put the sun in the same position as it appears in the backdrop but I will do to start with so just moving it round see it in the preview so moving it round into that area more or less then switch back to the view I was in and have a look at what we've got here so at the moment the ground's quite well lit and lower the lower the Sun so it's it's leaving quite a large shadow region you can see there's some obviously the clouds casting a bit of this because it's softened the shadow but otherwise the Sun shadow in this is quite hard edged because looking at a large object you wouldn't expect to see uh, very blurry soft shadows so I'm just going to experiment a bit with the position now of the Sun and I'm just watching the preview here to see uh, see what setting I like I just want enough shadow to show off the Trambians effect okay well that's a fairly large shadow area you can play with this at your leisure yourself now we'll switch to true ambience rendering so render options premium effects I'll leave it at 64 as I did for the last example true ambience TA scattering correction turn off reflection correction raise the depth to 4 and give that a quick render and you can see now the render time is going to be 12 minutes which is a considerable improvement over uh, where we were before uh, the other thing that I'm noticing is that we've got some sky dome color which is providing the light for this area but since we're using trambience mode we could uh, set that to black also and get some more light in now from the sky so you can see there's a gentle tint of blue 
and that's coming from this sky. Well, we could use uh, gel lights to improve that. So if I switch the wireframe view, I've got the sphere selected. I'll control C and control V that sphere. And I'm going to shrink it slightly because it's the surface that uh, is going to provide the lighting in this case because I'm going to use a gel light. So I'm going to convert the selection to a gel, uh, a light, a radial light source and then edit this. And you can see that use gel is already selected thanks to the fact that well, I've converted it from the sphere so I know it's going to be aligned correctly all I need to do is set it up so normal 100% transparency I don't need the transparency setting for the mask because it's all coming from this image and ambient up to 100 right that's that set and it's in spherical mode because uh, of copying and pasting include only the background for a gel light and turn on true ambience optimization and that should set us up now with additional lighting coming from the backdrop there so now we've been able to fill this area in with a bit more light that's in accordance with what we've got as a backdrop and uh, if we wanted that to be a bit stronger copy and paste and I'll just enlarge it slightly as long as the lights don't coincide with one another now there will be a time overhead on this except it's not showing there so it's obviously not a very high time overhead and you can see now we're, we're seeing into this shadow region which is uh, good so I suppose I'll just let that render out and then you can see the results so I'll just pause the video here and know it's going to take another nine or ten minutes so there's a completed render and well that's all very well but to be honest it's a little bit boring we can do better than this there's some more interesting options available now we've got this all captured so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the radial light and uh, I'm radial light, select that and then hold the shift key down and select radial light 2 and then hold the shift key down and select the sphere and group them all together and then I'm going to move the camera position around so you get a different view of this and uh, while, we're, while we're previewing we'll switch to render options and drop the rays per pixel to 4 so that'll make previewing faster and what we're going to do is just change our camera position and see if we can get a bit of more a dramatic position on the, the render. So let's see where we are now. Okay, well, it's looking down the coastline from the other way. I'm going to lower the camera closer to the, the water. So uh, we're getting quite close to the, the water surface and see how that looks. That usually adds a bit of drama to a scene. Right, uh, move the camera in out underground using the nano preview here, which uh, I think it's in a fast preview mode, so that's not going to interfere with what I'm doing. If you can get a TA render preview, and if you you go to this little arrow here and select accurate rendering, but it will slow the rendering process time down for the nano preview. It could slow your whole processes down. So I'm just moving the camera in closer to the coast, so we've got a bit of a reverse of the last composition. And as I have. Uh, as I've linked these spheres together, I'll look at the overhead view. I know they're all going to stay in alignment with the setup that I've created so that the light provided from the gel lights is going to align with the uh, the ambient light that's being provided from the sky. Now, as I said, we don't have to have the sun in the correct place as far as this captured sky is concerned. So what I'm going to do now is change the sun position I get it into view. You can see it here in the preview. You can see it there. It's uh, visible in the wireframe, which means I can use Control and Alt and click on the wireframe to position it where I want and get a bit of light on this coast and then maybe do some fine adjustment. Cause, uh, it's nice to have the clouds cast shadows, but sometimes it can be a bit inconvenient because the positioning of the sun can get a bit fiddly. I'm going to rotate. I can rotate the clouds out of the way until the sun clips the landscape there but it also has some effect on the you know the clouds are casting shadows now uh, likewise I can scale if I go to edit the size of the sphere and that's going to change where the shadows appear and it also changes the position of the clouds in the sky because of the way they're mapped so there's a few useful options to be had there you don't have to stick with having a fully black sky. If we start introducing some colour into the sky now, you can see it adds in and you get more drama in the scene. 
I suppose that uh, we can always get rid of one of the radial lights if if we think there's too much light arriving in the ambient regions and that'll increase the contrast in the scene and we don't have to stick with the same coloured sun obviously that's going to affect the appearance of the, the clouds it's interacting with the haze which is okay but the clouds are not reflecting the sun colour so at that point we can change the ambient colour that's creating the the cloud effect and then um, modify it so that it's not quite so dramatic there so you can mix different colours into your sky to uh, to various effect just move the camera around and because the clouds are mapped onto the background now it's very quick to preview these things so now I've got the sun I think I've either I'm going to increase the intensity of the sun or change that colour. I'll try increasing the intensity of the sun first uh, render it scene, right, and then have a look how that looks. So that's uh, it's quite a nice effect, the sun's hidden there behind that cloud. I, I might just add a bit, I'm going to RGB values, I might want a bit of blue in there and uh, because of the way the colours cap that'll change the response on these areas so I rather like the look of that and I'll settle for this uh, render options I just turn the razor pixel to 64 and hit render and uh, we'll have a look at that when it's completed so all done and that's the end of the tutorial and I hope that's uh, given you some ideas for using the spherical mapper and uh, incorporating it in your own scenes <laughs>